Okay, hi everybody, we're back for the second part of the 2019 National 5 Physics Written Paper, Section 2. That's this big, long, two and a half hour exam. So this is part two, we're going to have a look at the questions in the electricity and properties of matter topics. So, let's just pick up where we left off then. We finished with Question 4, and we're on question 5, and uh, here we go. It's a student is investigating how the length of a wire affects its resistance, and the student connects different lengths of wire to a power supply of fixed voltage, and measures the current in each length of wire, and there's the results shown in the table. And we have to draw a graph of these measurements on the graph paper provided. So first things first, Label the axes. So x-axis is the length of the wire in metres. And the y-axis is the current in amps. Just use exactly the same headings that there is in the table. And then we have our values on the x-axis. We need to go up to 1 metre. And on the y-axis our highest current is 0 0.94. I just watch because these readings are decreasing uh, in the table. So... The highest one is 0.94, so let's go up in 0.1s, and we can go up to 1 amp there. Then we can start plotting our points, and be careful to make sure your points are plotted correctly to within half a box. We call that half box tolerance. So our first point is 0.2 metres, uh, we have a current of 0.94 amps. That's our first point, and our second point, when the length was 0.4 metres, the current was 0.66 amps. Our third point, the length was 0.6, and the current was 0.47. And when the length was 0.8, the current was 0.37. Taking care to plot these very carefully and then at one meter in length it's 0 0.32 amps and remember these points have to be plotted to within a half box tolerance then we want our best fit line straight line or curve and uh, that pretty much is us that's the graph and no doubt we'll probably need that later on in the question Okay, 5A part 2. State whether the resistance of the wire increases, decreases, or stays the same as the length of the wire increases. Well, our graph shows us that as the length of the wire increases, the current is decreasing. Uh, and if the current decreases, then, since V equals I times R, and V is constant, when the current goes down, the resistance must have increased. As the length increases. Then use the graph. Here we go. We have to make a prediction of what the current will be when the length of the wire is 0.5 metres. There's 0.5 metres. There's where it cuts the graph. And that is about 0.56 amps. 0.56 amps. And of course make sure you write that in the space that's provided. Uh, and the answer booklet 0 0.56 amps. Then suggest one way in which the experimental procedure could be improved to give more reliable results. Well, you want to repeat your measurements and find the mean of those repeated measurements to make them more reliable. You could also, if we have a look at the table, they've only taken lengths every 20 centimetres there. 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So we could make additional measurements of current and length at smaller intervals. So maybe at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. Okay, let's move on. Still in question 5, part B this time. A length of the wire with resistance 5.2 ohms is folded into a rectangular shape and the ends are joined together and an ohmmeter is placed across the wire between points X and Y. So that 
full length of wire there is 5.2 ohms. And we have to state whether the reading on the ohmmeter would be less than, equal to, or greater than 5.2 ohms. Well, the reading's going to be less than 5.2 ohms. Because the top half of the wire is, is 2.6 ohms, and so is the bottom half, and they're in parallel. And if you work out the total resistance of those two in parallel, it's 1.3 ohms. Question 6. To learn electricity, a student's investigating connecting different combinations of resistors and circuits. We've got a series circuit here with three series resistors and we have to calculate the current in the circuit. So first thing we need is the total resistance in series. You just add them together. That's 480 ohms. And then the current will be the supply voltage 12 over the total resistance, which is 480 and we get an answer of 0 0.025 amps. Four marks there. One mark for finding the total resistance. And then calculate the power dissipated in the 120 ohm resistor. Well, we've just worked out the current. These two parts of the question are connected, part one and part two. So let's use the current and the resistance and use the power equation P equals I squared R. And use the current we've just worked out, don't forget to square it, times the 120 ohm resistor. And we'll get an answer of 0 0.075 watts. That's the power produced in that resistor. Moving on, 6 part C, the student sets up a different circuit as shown. This time we've got two parallel resistors and we have to determine the total resistance of the circuit. So firstly we'll do the parallel bit, it's two 720 ohm resistors in parallel and if you do that in your calculator using the relationship you'll get 360 ohms. But remember the shortcut as well that if the two resistors are the same in parallel then the total resistance will be half of one of them. So half of one of them is our 360 ohms. Then don't forget we have to add that to the 120 ohm there in series. So 360 plus 120 is 480 ohms. Same as before. And state how the power dissipated in the 120 ohm resistor in this circuit compares to the power it dissipated in the 120 ohm resistor in the circuit in part A. Well, the current this time, if we work out the current again, using V over R, still 12 volt supply, total resistance was 480, the current's going to be the same as before. And if the current is the same as before, then the power will be the same as before, because P equals I squared R, the current is the same, it's still a 120 ohm resistor, so we're still going to get a power of 0 0.075 watts. It's a bit sneaky. Anyway, let's move on. Question 7. A hot water dispenser is used to heat enough water for one cup at a time and the rating plate is shown. And the hot water dispenser takes 26 seconds to heat enough water for one cup. And we have to show that the energy supplied to the hot water dispenser during this time is 91,000 joules. So in a show question, make sure you show every step. There's the relationship. Energy is power times time. The power from the rating plate was 3.5 kilowatts. That's 3.5 times 10 to the 3 and the time was 26 seconds. And if you do that in your calculator, you get 91,000 joules. That's what we've been asked to show. Make sure that is your final line. Then the hot water dispenser heats 0 0.25 kilograms of water for each cup. Calculate the minimum energy required to heat 0 0.25 kilograms of water from an initial temperature of 20 degrees to its boiling point. This is a heat energy equation, EH equals CM delta T. You look up C on your data sheet for water. 
specific heat capacity is 4180. There's the mass of the water and the change in temperature. Well, it's going from 20 up to 100 degrees. So, the change in temperature. If this was a show question, we would have to show all this explicitly. But the change in temperature is 80 degrees. And then, if you do all that on your calculator, then the heat energy required is 83,600 joules. Part 2. As the water is dispensed into the cup, steam is released. Determine the maximum mass of steam that can be produced while the water for one cup is being heated. So some of our energy is being used to change the water into steam. And it's the difference between the 91,000 and the 83,600. So that extra energy that we've got, if the energy supplied was 91,000, and uh, we only needed 83,600 to get it to boiling point, then the remainder of the energy, which is 7,400 joules, is the energy that's required to change some of the mass of the water into steam. And we can use our specific latent heat relationship, EH equals ML, to work out that mass. So the heat energy was 7,400. That's going to equal to the mass times the specific latent heat of vaporisation of water, which you'll find right at the bottom of your data sheet. There it is, 22.6 times 10 to the 5. And we substitute that into the relationship for L, and then rearrange it to find M. 7,400 over 22.6 times 10 to the 5 gives us 3.3 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. That's 3.3 grams of water. And then explain why in practice the mass of steam produced is less than that calculated in B part 2. And it's the textbook answer here is that some heat energy is lost to the surroundings. One mark. Question 8, we're on to properties of matter here. A water rocket consists of a plastic bottle partly filled with water, then air is pumped in through the water and when the pressure is great enough, the tube detaches from the bottle and water is forced out the bottle which causes the bottle to be launched upwards. And at launch, the air in the bottle is at a pressure of 1.74 times 10 to the 5 pascals. And on the diagram below, we have to show all the forces acting vertically on the bottle as it's launched. Well, I've put two arrows on there. The downwards force will be the weight of the rocket, and upwards we have the thrust. One mark for each of those names and the arrows. A part B, if the area of water in contact with the pressurised air in the bottle is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3 square metres, Calculate the force exerted on the water by the pressurised air at launch. Well, this is force, pressure and area, so we're going to go for our P equals F over A relationship. And we're looking for the force exerted on the water. And there's the pressure at launch, 1.74 times 10 to the 5. And that's equal to the force over the area, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Don't forget, you're getting one mark for the relationship and one mark for the sub. Then I would rearrange it for F and do the calculation. And if you do that on your calculator, you're going to get an answer of 783 newtons. One mark for the correct answer with the correct unit. Part C, at launch, the air in the bottle's got a volume of 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic metres. And at one point in the flight, the volume of the air in the bottle increases by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic metres. What have we to do here? Calculate the pressure of the air inside the bottle at this new point in the flight. OK, we've got the initial volume. 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Let's call that V1. 
and then the volume increases by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So it will go up to 8.7 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic metres. So we've got a V1 and a V2, and we've defined P2. And P1 is the initial pressure that we had at the start of the question. There it is, 1.74 times 10 to the 5. I often find a highlighter pen is useful in exams. Just to highlight the numbers we might need later on in the question. Okay, we've got everything we need. We're now going for P1, V1 equals P2, V2. It's P2 we're looking for. So substitute everything else in correctly to guarantee yourself the substitution mark. That's P2 we're looking for. And then rearrange to find P2. So put 1.74 times 10 to the 5 times 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 all over 8.7 times 10 to the minus 4. And if you do that on your calculator, you get 1.5 times 10 to the 5 pascals. The pressure should have gone down because the volume went up. Four marks. Pretty tricky. Question 8c. Using the kinetic model, explain what happens to the pressure of the air inside the bottle as the volume increases. I always draw a diagram when it's a kinetic model question. Let's draw the particles in a box. They're all moving about at random. Now, if the volume was to increase, then the particles will have a greater distance to travel before they will hit the walls of the container again. So they're going to hit the walls less often. That means there's going to be less average force on the walls of the container. The surface area of the container will increase as well. And so if we look at the relationship P equals F over A, if the average force goes down and the surface area has increased, then the net effect of both of them is that your pressure will decrease as the volume increases. Okay, let's leave it there because the rest of the paper is waves and radiation. We will see you in the next video for part 3.